Hello everybody. Today I am going to deliver the second lecture of module 5. Module 5 is devoted to the transverse vibration of beam and uh, I have started first with the derivation of the differential equation in general that means including the damping properties as well as the externally applied force external excitation then uh, I started this derivation solution of the free vibration problem so that I demonstrated how a solution of the free vibration problem when the exciting force is zero and damping is also considered zero so undamped vibration solution was obtained in terms of uh, this hyperbolic and trigonometrical functions associated with uh, undetermined constants. Now today I will discuss the usefulness of that free vibration solution to find out the natural frequencies and mode shapes of the beam with various n conditions. So today outlines of my lecture will be first I will cover the natural frequencies and mode shapes of simply supported beam, cantilever beam and free free beam, fixed fixed beam. So these uh, conditions are the basic conditions in the boundaries that means either it may be pinned at one end or both end it may be pinned then it may have one end uh, this fixed other end free so that type of beam is called cantilever beam and very common in various applications in civil engineering as a canopy beam which is your actually like a cantilever even the aircraft wing can also be modeled as a cantilever beam then free free beam both the ends are free so that type of beam uh, exhibits a very interesting solution that uh, gives you some rigid body modes two rigid body modes are possible there as well as the elastic modes so that will be revealed in my discussion and then I will discuss the fixed fixed beam both ends are clamped so after obtaining these natural frequencies and mode shapes because natural frequencies and mode shapes are actually the dynamic properties of the any structure so their natural frequency and mode shape actually depends on the physical parameters of the system it does not depend on the external force whatever manner the external force is applied whether it is deterministic or random it does not influence the natural frequencies and mode shape and mode shapes for a particular n conditions and the physical parameters of the beam are unique although the magnitude magnitude may be relative but shape is unique so there I will discuss all these things in uh, the formulation of natural frequencies and mode shapes the formulation is of common type that means you will be getting a transcendental equation that requires a numerical technique to solve however in the class I will demonstrate a graphical solution for one or two cases. After that I will discuss whether the orthogonality condition of modes exists or not. There also I will find as in the previous cases of torsional vibration and axial vibration the modes are orthogonal to each other if the natural frequencies are distinct. Okay. Now let us start with the partial differential equation of motion of the beam that is given by ei del 4 y by del x 4 plus m del square y by del t square equal to 0. Now here you are seeing that one is your inertia term and other is related to elastic properties of the system and in this case I have neglected the damping so I am going to obtain the undamped natural frequency and undamped mode shape there is the conventional there is a very little influence of the damping of the structure 
in the natural frequencies because the damping ratio of the most of the engineering materials are small so therefore the damped natural frequencies is almost equal to the undamped natural frequency so i will not distinguish between the damped natural frequency and undamped natural frequency here i will go for determining the natural frequencies and mode shapes that will related to the zero damping case okay now for free vibration analysis one can assume that motion is harmonic so i can assume that y as a function of x and t equal to phi x into sin omega t where phi x is a shape function or you can call it as a mode fun mode shape function and omega is the natural frequency of the beam substituting this here in this equation you will get in the left hand side you will get the fourth derivative of phi whereas sin omega t will appear as a constant because we are now differentiating this with respect to x so it is a partial derivative and therefore the time function is treated as a constant here whereas in the second term second term we differentiate with respect to time t so therefore after second differentiation we will get minus omega square sin omega t and therefore after some uh, arrangement we will now get d to the power 4 into phi divided by dx4 so here from ordinary differential equation we are lending up to a partial differential equation we are lending to a ordinary differential equation because of separation of variable now minus lambda 4 into phi how minus sign is coming because we have differentiated the sign function twice with respect to time as a result of this minus omega square sin omega t was coming and this was sin omega t is cancelled from both sides okay so now you can see that introducing m omega square by ei as a parameter lambda to the power 4 we can now write the equation as this to the power 4 into phi divided by dx to the power 4 minus lambda 4 phi equal to 0 so this is the differential equation that need to be solved to find the mode shape function the solution i have discussed in the last class so i am writing here the solution is phi x equal to a1 cos hyperbolic lambda x plus a2 sin hyperbolic lambda x plus a3 cos lambda x plus a4 sin lambda x now here you can see lambda is a frequency parameter once you obtain the lambda then you can find omega because omega here can be related to lambda as omega is equal to lambda square root over ei by m so once i know the lambda omega can be found out and in the process of solution we will obtain the multiple values of lambda so therefore multiple values of omega also will be found so as i have told earlier and you also remember that continuous system possesses infinite number of degrees of freedom so there is a inf there is infinite number of natural frequencies in continuous system and also infinite number of modes however for practical computation a finite number of modes are taken and it is seen that most of the analysis first few modes are sufficient and after that the displacement magnitude goes on decreasing so therefore summation of modes can be truncated to a finite number of terms okay now you see that a1 a2 a3 a4 that are appearing in these equations are constants of integration that have to be found from the application of boundary conditions okay now different boundary conditions are possible so here we will discuss only the classical boundary condition what are the classical boundary condition first is pin pin so that means a beam with a pin n then we'll discuss another boundary condition cantilever beam so this is simply supported 
ss or i can write pin pin both ends are pin even one end is supported on roller the same formulation will hold good so here this end is fixed and this is free so this is clamp free and popularly this type of beam is known as cantilever then i will discuss free free beam both ends are free so this is a typical example of semi definite system so there is no constraint at the ends as a result of this there is possibility that rigid body modes are excited and rigid body modes correspond to zero natural frequency so here you will find when i obtain this frequency equation omega zero is also a possible solution so free free beam are seen here for example a road or practical application it is found in practical application a road pavement can be considered as a beam resting on elastic subgrade where both the ends are treated as a free so that is one possibility a road pavement can be considered because the length is higher much higher than the width of the road so therefore in modeling we can assume that it is a free free beam resting on the elastic subgrid then we have this uh, the aircraft aircraft the fuselage is a long long body so it acts like a uh, slender element so it is undergoing elastic deformation also along with the rigid body mode when it is in the flight okay even in the runway when it is taxiing there is also possibility of uh, this developing the rigid body tensation or rigid body rotation of this fuselage or vehicle along with the elastic mode when the uh, the body is slender generally aircraft is slender structure so the elastic mode will be produced will be generated along with the rigid body modes so this is free free condition then other conditions may be clamped clamped both the answer clamped so these are the basic boundary condition that we will consider here and can be classified as a classical boundary condition however non classical boundary conditions are also encountered in a practice for example a bridge girder which is one end is say resting on the uh, the hinge support and another end is on the elastic pad so in that case we will uh, take the support at the other end as a elastic support that means one end is elastically resting so in that case eigen value calculation will be different okay now let us discuss first simply supported beam okay now here phi x is equal to a1 cos lambda x plus a2 sin hyperbolic lambda x plus a3 cos lambda x plus a4 sin lambda x now here you can see if i show you a simply supported beam here okay one end is on roller maybe hinged also same condition will hold good and another is on the hinge support so here at this end if y is the deflection at any section at a distance x we have the displacement y x t upward displacement is y x t y is a function of x and t okay so at any section x we have the bending moment shear force etc at the support at the constraint end we will get the y is equal to zero suppose this is the zero end so here x is equal to zero and length of the beam is l then this is l okay this end is x is equal to l y is equal to zero and another condition is ei del square y by del x square that is the equation of bending moment and at the roller end the bending moment is zero okay now here i am getting again displacement y is equal to 0 at this end and similarly the bending moment is also 0 so these four conditions are required to relate the four constants of integration to a set of four equation from which we can formulate this uh, formulate the boundary value or eigen value problem now boundary conditions are now substituted 
at x is equal to 0, phi is equal to 0. So if I put phi is equal to 0, you can see this term is 1 and this term will be 0 when we substitute x is equal to 0. Okay. If I substitute x is equal to 0 here, then here x is 0. So this term is 1, this is 0, again this term is 1 and this is 0. So ultimately we get this condition a1 plus a3 equal to 0 from the first condition. This gives the condition of x is equal to 0, phi is equal to 0. This condition will give you this equation a1 plus a3 is equal to 0. So a1 minus a3 equal to 0. And the second condition, second condition if you apply this bending moment is 0. So bending moment requires the second derivative. So second derivative is obtained and second derivative when you write it here you will get this lambda square that coefficient is coming out as a result of differentiation. So therefore you are getting lambda square a1 cos hyperbolic lambda x plus a2 lambda square sin hyperbolic lambda x here minus a3 lambda square cos lambda x minus a4 lambda square sin lambda x. Now substitute the boundary condition here at x is equal to 0 we put x is equal to 0 then this term is again going to be 1. This term is 1. This term is again 0. And this is also 1. And this is 0. So at uh, second boundary condition that is bending moment at x is equal to 0 gives ei d square phi by dx square that is the at x is equal to 0 equated to 0 yields this a1 plus uh, this a1 minus a3. So this yields this equation. So that is coming from this second boundary condition. So you are getting a1 plus a3 equal to 0 and a1 minus a3 equal to 0. Obviously these two equation ultimately gives you a1 equal to 0, a3 equal to 0. So therefore, the mode shape functions after dropping a1 and a3, we can write simply phi x is equal to a2 sin hyperbolic lambda x plus a4 sin hyperbolic lambda x, where lambda is the frequency parameter. Now, this equation we will now utilize for the second boundary conditions, that is second that means the boundary condition at the other end. So first end we have covered at the first end our result was a1 and a3 both are 0. And the second end when we consider that is x is equal to L now we will substitute here. Again we will get that x is equal to L if I substitute here. Now here this second derivative is required. So second derivative will be a2 lambda square sin hyperbolic lambda x and here if you carry out the second derivative again the minus sign will come so when you put x is equal to 0 you can see this is becoming 0 and the this is also 0. So this x is equal to L if you substitute because now we are dealing the boundary condition at the other end. So phi at L, phi double prime at L will give you what it will give? It will give A2 sin hyperbole lambda L minus A4 sin hyperbolic lambda l equal to 0 so lambda square is cancelled from both sides and phi l is also 0 phi l you will get a2 sin hyperbolic lambda l plus a4 sin hyperbolic sin lambda l 
now we can easily solve this equation because again we are getting these two equations so a2 a4 are unknown quantities a2 a4 are unknown quantities okay so after solving this we are now getting you see that i have already done it in the previous slide so x is equal to l phi l equal to a2 sin hyperbolic lambda l plus a4 sin lambda l equal to 0 second derivative at x is equal to l gives you a2 lambda square sin hyperbolic lambda l sin hyperbolic lambda l minus a4 lambda square sin lambda l so now after cancelling this lambda square from both sides we now get these two equation a2 sin hyperbolic lambda l plus a4 sin lambda l equal to 0 and a2 sin hyperbolic lambda l minus a4 sin lambda l equal to 0 so these equations are coming from the boundary conditions after application of boundary condition at the other end x is equal to 0 x is equal to l x is equal to 0 gives a1 and a3 being 0 so other end at x is equal to l when the boundary conditions are utilized at x is equal to l then we are getting these two equations these two equations if i add i will get 2a2 sin hyperbolic lambda l equal to 0 now you can see sin hyperbolic lambda l this value is non-zero sin hyperbolic lambda l this if i write it lambda l e to the power lambda l minus e to the power minus lambda l divided by 2 lambda is a positive quantity and l is also a positive quantity so it is never zero so therefore only possibility is a2 equal to zero so substituting a2 equal to zero now we are getting the equation that is the transcendental equation sin lambda l equal to zero so this equation is a very simple trigonometrical equation which is also a transcendental equation and its solution is lambda l equal to 0 pi 2 pi like that it will go so we can write lambda l equal to n pi but we will omit 0 because 0 here has no meaning both the ends are constrained so there are uh, no possibility of rigid body movement in the upward direction because it is constrained at both the ends from moving in the upward direction so here n tends to this up to infinity okay so once you get this lambda so lambda is n pi by l this is lambda so our frequency equation was omega is equal to lambda square e i by m so putting this we have now n pi square e i m l to the power 4 so this is the natural frequency of the beam having simply supported ends and for first frequency obtained you put n is equal to 1 so pi square into root over e i divided by m l to the power 4 m the meaning of the symbol m is mass per unit length and unit is kg per meter l is the length of the beam unit will take meter e is taken ei is unit will be should be in newton meter square because i is meter to the power 4 and e is newton per meter square so this unit is this so if you put the si unit here then the circular frequency that will appear as radian per second and if you want to convert this into this cyclic frequency the cycles per second so fn will be omega n divided by 2 pi and time period 
is 1 by f n ok. So, these are the fundamental uh, relations for frequencies. Now, here we have uh, defined and mode shape function is now because here you can see all the quantities are 0, but a 4 is not to be taken 0 because a 4 is taken 0 then there is a trivial solution because ultimately what we are getting from these two equation if we add then you are getting 2 a 2 sin h omega l that is a 2 is 0. Now, any of the equation if you put a 2 equal to 0 you are getting a 4 sin omega l equal to 0. So, since a 4 cannot be 0 otherwise you will not get the vibration shape. So, possibility is sin omega l equal to 0. So, in this beam equation that uh, we have got the four constants of integration a 1, a 2, a 3 and a 4 and in the process of obtaining the constants of integration by applying the boundary conditions you get except a 4 all are 0. So, therefore, the mode shift function is now given as phi x is equal to a 4 sin omega x. Now, one important thing is that a 4 is a arbitrary constant whose magnitude has to be found out. Now, here I can write this sin and lambda is n pi by L. So, this is the mode shape function. Now, different shapes of different mode shape functions can be obtained for n is equal to 1, 2, 3 like that and uh, we are familiar with this type of function very well. So, we can find the mode shape function easily where the nodes are situ located etc. Now, the A4 cannot be determined in absolute sense. So, you have to normalize the mode shape and different normalization procedures are available. Now, in our discussion, we will adopt this uh, mode shape normalization with respect to mass. Okay. You can see the mode shape when plotted along the x axis. So, the mode shape function is nth mode shape is given by uh, this magnitude I am taking now a 4 I am taking 1 for plotting purpose, but this is also one rough way of normalization that is taking the amplitude as 1 unity. So, other amplitudes are proportion according to that. So, phi n x equal to now sin n pi x by L. So, if I put uh, n is equal to 1, I get first mode shape. sin pi x by L. So, this shape is obvious. So, at x is equal to 0, the value is 0 and x is equal to L also it is 0 because sin pi is 0 and x is equal to L by 2 you are getting the maximum amplitude. So, that is taken as 1. Now, similarly this phi 2 x sin 2 pi x by L. Again, the boundary conditions are satisfied at x is equal to 0 and x is equal to L for 0 deflection and uh, you can see that when x is equal to L by 2 then again sin pi is coming so it is 0. So, here one node is there besides the support points which are also nodes. So, you are getting one node in the second mode this is second mode at the middle this is first mode. So, one node is appearing at the middle point of the beam in the second mode. Third mode is similarly obtained by putting n is equal to 3 and two nodes are obtained in addition to support. So, these two nodes are situated symmetrically and its distance is 0.33 L from either of the support. Okay. So, one node here at a distance of 0.33 L this is also. Similarly, fourth mode if you plot then we are getting three nodes. Nodes are the point where displacement is 0. So, during the vibration of the beam in the second mode the middle point has no displace, displacement. Similarly, when the beam is vibrated in the third mode these two point that is one third point 
from either side will have no displacement. Similarly, here you can determine the no displacement point that is zero displacement point besides the support are three in the fourth mode. So these are situated from left hand end as 0.25L, 0.5L, 0.75L and zero of course it is the support. In the fifth mode again we are getting the number of modes increases. So as we go in the higher and higher mode we will get more number of nodal points. So these are the nodes where displacement is zero. So here we are getting four modes in the uh, fifth mode shape besides the support. Okay. So simply supported uh, beam natural frequency in mode shape now is clear to you. Uh, the mode shape function is simply given by the sine wave uh, sine function sine n pi x by l where n is integers and this frequency of course the frequency parameter lambda l is n pi. Now we come to the cantilever beam. So cantilever beam is characterized by one end fixed and other end free. So this is your free end and this is clamped end. This beam is called cantilever. Now at x is equal to 0 you can see the displacement is 0 as well as the slope. Slope will be 0 and at the free end you will get the bending moment is 0 as well as shear force. So what we get actually the second derivative and third derivative of the mode shape function has to be utilized at the end x is equal to L and the mode shape function n is first derivative need to be utilized at x is equal to 0 the left hand end. So uh, the second derivative and third derivative are obtained this is the basic function that we have found from the solution of the differential equation. Then first derivative that is the slope d phi by dx okay. Then this is the second derivative d square phi by dx square. Then it is third derivative d cube phi by dx cube. So all the derivatives are shown here and you can see that in the first derivative coefficient lambda is appearing in the second derivative lambda square is coming and in the third derivative lambda cube is coming and you can also note the change of sign the differentiation process of cos hyperbolic and sin hyperbolic function will not alter the sign of the original function however the differentiation of cosine and sin will alter the sign of the original function so originally it was cos lambda x now it is becoming after first differentiation it is becoming sin lambda x and after second differentiation it is becoming cos lambda x again after third differentiation it is coming as cos lambda x and after fourth differentiation it is coming again this sin lambda x with a positive sign. So you can note here the change of sign here also the last term sin lambda x in the first differentiation it becomes plus cross lambda x in the second differentiation it becomes minus sin lambda x in the fourth differentiation again it remains as minus cos lambda x. So minus sin is here in the third derivative okay here it is third derivative. So we have originally it was plus sin lambda x but after the process of differentiation when you go up to third derivative we are getting as minus cos lambda x. So similarly you can find in other derivative also you can note specially the change of sign because the change of sign is very important if you cannot assign the sign properly after differentiation the result will be incorrect. So I apply the boundary conditions phi is equal to 0 the displacement is 0 this end displacement is 0. So therefore we are getting if I put here 
cos hyperbolic 0 is 1, sin hyperbolic 0 is 0, cos 0 is 1, sin 0 is 0. So, we are getting a1 plus a3 equal to 0. So, this gives a1 equal to minus a3. Utilizing the zero slope condition at the fixed end, we get here because lambda will be cancelled from both sides if I make it, this equation equal to 0 at x is equal to 0. So, we are getting this a2 plus a4, a2 plus a4 equal to 0. So, a2 is equal to minus a4. So, these two conditions we have got. Now, utilizing these two conditions, now mode shape function you can see previously it was containing four constants of integration. Now, I am writing this in terms of two constants of integration because this relationship are obtained. Because of this relationship, now I can write a1 cos hyperbolic lambda x minus cos lambda x plus a2 sin hyperbolic lambda x minus sin lambda x. Okay. So, now with these two constants of integration, we again differentiate this to apply the other end condition that is the zero bending moment and zero shear condition. So, for that function we have again obtained the second derivative and third derivative. Okay. So, second derivative is a1 lambda square cos hyperbolic lambda x plus cos lambda x plus a2 lambda square sin hyperbolic lambda x plus sin lambda x and third derivative of phi is a1 lambda cube sin hyperbolic lambda x minus sin lambda x plus a2 lambda cube cos hyperbolic lambda x plus cos lambda x ok. So, many moment shear force zero conditions are applied here. So, we are getting this this is coming from this E i d square phi d x square equal to 0 that is E i phi double prime equal to 0. So, that is coming from there and we are writing directly these two terms with coefficient a 1 and a 2. Similarly, this equation is coming from this zero shear condition and we are getting this equation utilizing this equation after substituting x is equal to lambda l. So, we are getting sin hyperbolic lambda l minus sin lambda l plus cos hyperbolic lambda l plus cos lambda l ok. So, here you can see there are two equations and two constants of integration. So, we require to determine a1 and a2, but one possible solution is that a1 and a2 are both 0 then this equation will be satisfied because these are not 0, but this will give you a trivial solution. For non-trivial solution the determinant of the matrix that is formed with the coefficient of a1 and a2 is equated to 0. So, accordingly we get for non-trivial solution determinant cos lambda l plus cos lambda l. This is the element of the first row and first column. This is the element of the first row second column. So, that is sin hyperbolic lambda l plus sin lambda l. Then from that second equation we are getting sin hyperbolic lambda l minus sin lambda l plus this equation cos hyperbolic lambda l plus cos lambda l. How this determinant is written? Just you write the coefficients of a1, a2 here in the appropriate rows because this will come here, this will be here, again this will be there and this is brought here. So, this determinant is equated to 0. So, now expand the determinant term by term. So, expanding we are getting cos hyperbolic square lambda l plus cos hyperbolic lambda l into cos lambda l plus cos hyperbolic lambda l into cos lambda l plus cos square lambda l minus sin hyperbolic square lambda l minus sin 
hyperbolic lambda l into sin lambda l plus sin hyperbolic lambda l into sin lambda l plus sin square lambda l. Now you can see some term will get cancelled. So this will be 0 and this is also means these two terms can be cancelled. So these two term can be cancelled. So we are getting result of this addition for this two term is 0. Okay. Then uh, this two term when in added will get 2 cos hyperbolic lambda L cos lambda L. This two term when added we get cos square lambda L plus sin square lambda L equal to 1. And again when this two term is added we will get cos hyperbolic square lambda L minus sin hyperbolic square lambda L equal to 1. So ultimately you can see the result of this uh, equation or addition and subtraction you will get this result as 2 plus 2 cos hyperbolic lambda L cos lambda L equal to 0. So ultimately we are getting 1 plus cos hyperbolic lambda L cos lambda L equal to 0. So this is the transcendental equation. This type of equation is a nonlinear equation which requires solution with a iterative technique. So various tools are available for solution of this type of equation. In MATLAB you will get different types of tools for solution of transcendental equation and one way is first the bracketing the roots in the several because the lambda L will have multiple number of solutions. So you will bracket the roots and then in each bracket you have to bisect accurately the root. So bracketing and bisection these are the two subroutines that can be used in the solution of such equation. Other possibility is Newton's eruption method that also can be applied. Okay. Now here you can see 1 plus cos hyperbole lambda L cos lambda L equal to 0. So this is the transcendental equation or it is called popularly as the frequency equation. or characteristic equation. Sometimes it is also called the characteristic equation. Different names is there and frequency equation is derived from the frequency determinant. So we can write this equation into this form cos hyperbole lambda L equal to minus 1 divided by cos lambda L that can be minus second of lambda L. Okay. Now mode shape function whatever we have got. Now we write in this form phi x equal to a1 I am taking common cos hyperbolic lambda x minus cos lambda x plus a2 by a1 sin hyperbolic lambda x minus sin lambda x and bracket closed. And a2 by a1 how it becomes this? You can see the earlier slide. Say here a1 of this a1 into this plus a2 into this equal to 0. So we can easily write from this equation a2 by a1 ratio. So a2 by a1 ratio can be written here as minus cos hyperbolic lambda L plus cos lambda L divided by sin hyperbolic lambda L plus sin lambda L. So this is the coefficient of other terms in the mode shape function. So this is here it is written. So mode shape function is now written as phi x equal to a1 cos hyperbolic lambda x minus cos lambda x plus alpha. Alpha is a constant which is equal to minus cos hyperbolic lambda L plus cos lambda L divided by sin hyperbolic lambda L plus sin lambda L. So you can see this is the mode shape function for the cantilever beam. Earlier we got a very 
a simple function that is mode shape function was uh, some constant into sin n pi x by l. Now here we are getting a combination of hyperbolic and trigonometrical function. Okay. Now let us illustrate the solution because lambda l will have number of roots. So let us first see the first uh, that is by graphical method approximately you can determine the roots. Now you can see one function can be f1 another function can be f2. So if I draw the function that is f2 is a minus 1 by cos lambda l and you can see this cos lambda l is 0 when lambda l is pi by 2 is it not? and again lambda l is 3 pi by 2. So at the region where this it is a pi by 2 0.785 it will uh, this axis can be taken the vertical axis as pi by 2. So this will be unbounded here. Similarly this axis can be taken as 3 pi by 2. So here also you will get and again you can see that this curve that is you are getting it is nothing but this f2 function f2 lambda l and this is the function that is the hyperbolic function it is continuously increasing because of exponential terms and it is f1 lambda l. So intersection of the two graphs will give the solution the roots of the equation. So that is one intersection and that is one interaction. So taking the intersection point approximately we find the first root as lambda l1 equal to 1.9 and second root as 0.47 when the graphs are drawn in axial with a very limited point but if you take more number of points you will get more accurate curves. Now exact solution gives the result as one first root as 1.875 and it is the exact solution gives 4.69 something. So that is near to this the graphical solution can be obtained to find the roots approximately but when the quick solution is required and uh, you have no uh, program available and in your disposal that you can use this graphical method. Now here two roots can be identified from this solution. Okay. So mode shape function of the cantilever beam first mode is this. So at the free end you are getting displacement as well as slope as a non-zero quantity. Second mode you can see here at the fixed end both displacement and slopes are zero. So here if you draw a tangent it will be parallel to the beam axis so it will be horizontal. Then here you are getting the first node as 0.774L. So one additional node is coming here when you this is the first mode corresponding to the natural frequency omega 1. This is second mode which corresponds to the natural frequency omega 2. Here we are getting the two nodal point one is exactly at the center of the beam this is 0.5L and another is 0.868L then third mode when the frequency is omega 3 you are getting additionally three nodes so three nodes are obtained their displacement is zero at the nodal point displacement is zero so here nodal points are at 0.356 l 0.644 l 0.906 l and in the fifth mode here i have drawn up to fourth mode Okay, another mode can also be drawn. Okay, we are getting fourth node. So, like that, you can go on increasing the mode shape. Uh, this is first mode, this is first mode, this is second mode, this is third corresponding to this. This is corresponding to omega 1. I am writing again. So first mode is the bending mode of the cantilever that is well known to you. Okay. 
so that is first mode omega 1 that is second mode omega 2 that is third mode omega 3 and this is fourth mode omega 4 and this is fifth mode so earlier there was some counting mistake so now I am correcting this so this is up to fifth mode so here you are getting four this nodal points so you can see as you increase the number of modes the number of nodes are also increasing so node at the nodal point there is no displacement this is nodal point no displacement So if the beam is excited in the second mode, so at 0.774L you will get no displacement. Now let us come to the free free beam. Okay. Now free free beam, the both the ends are free, unrestrained beam. So here naturally the condition that applicable are the bending moment and shear both are zero. and shear both are zero and these conditions are applicable at x is equal to zero as well as at x is equal to l so in both the ends this same condition will be applicable only you have to put x is equal to zero here and x is equal to l here so we are utilizing this second and uh, third derivative again and at x is equal to 0 you are getting this condition phi double prime equal to 0 so that gives a1 minus a3 equal to 0 that is a1 equal to a3 when the shear force is taken 0 that is the third derivative then we are getting a2 minus a4 equal to 0 that is a2 equal to a4 okay so our mode shape function now becomes phi x equal to a1 cos hyperbolic lambda x plus cos lambda x plus a2 sin hyperbolic lambda x plus sin lambda x okay and again the same process is continued that at putting this uh, x is equal to l we are now getting a1 lambda square cos hyperbolic lambda l minus cos lambda l plus a2 lambda square sin hyperbolic lambda l minus sin lambda l and this is equated to 0 because at the free end that is again the x is equal to l is also free so that is the bending moment here at the free end x is equal to l 0 here shear force at free end that is coming a1 lambda cube sin hyperbolic lambda l plus sin lambda l plus a2 lambda cube cos hyperbolic lambda l minus cos lambda l this is equal to 0 so again for non-trivial solution we take the determinant of this matrix of the coefficient of a1 and a2 to be 0. So we are writing this uh, coefficient. So this is coming here. This is coming here. This is going there. And again this is going here. So we are writing the determinant and equated to 0. Okay. After expanding the determinant, we are getting this equation cos hyperbolic lambda l minus cos lambda l plus cos hyperbolic lambda l minus cos hyperbolic lambda l cos lambda l plus cos square lambda l minus sin hyperbolic lambda l plus sin hyperbolic lambda l sin lambda l minus sin lambda l sin hyperbolic lambda l plus sin square lambda l so combining these two this plus this as 1 and this plus this this minus this again equal to 1 okay 1 and cancelling this so ultimately what we are getting 1 minus cos hyperbolic lambda l cos lambda l equal to 0 now you can see lambda l 0 is again a root so this indicates that 0 natural frequency is possible but physically in a rigid beam there is a possibility of rigid body translation and there is also possibility of rigid body rotation okay so 
two zero natural frequencies are possible. One indicates the rigid body translation, another indicates the rigid body rotation. Okay. So therefore, this type of motion is seen in the aircraft. Okay. But aircraft being a long body, it also exhibits the or it also has elastic modes in addition to rigid body modes. So now mode shape function is phi x equal to a1 cos hyperbolic lambda x plus cos lambda x plus alpha sin hyperbolic lambda x plus sin lambda x where alpha is equal to cos hyperbolic lambda l minus cos lambda l divided by sin hyperbolic lambda l minus sin lambda l. So if I draw this uh, mode shape this is the rigid body mode corresponds to omega equal to 0. So here we can call it here lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, lambda 4, lambda 5. But here we will call lambda 0 1 and lambda 0 2. So this indicates the rigid body mode 1 and rigid body mode 2 which is nothing but 0 mode zero natural frequency. So you are getting one translational rigid body mode and one is rotational rigid body mode. And others are elastic mode. You can see the nodal points in the even nodal points appear in the first elastic mode. So two nodal points are appeared 0.224L and 0.776L symmetrically. And this being the free end. So here you are getting displacement as well as slope. So three nodes are appearing in the second elastic modes that is at 0.132, 0.5L, 0.868L. Four modes, uh, elastic modes are appearing, nodes are appearing in the third elastic modes, elastic mode that is 0.094L at a distance of 0.094L from left hand and another is symmetrically at 0.906L from the right hand and other nodes are 0.356L and 0.644L from the left hand end. Similarly, here we are getting in the fourth elastic mode, we are getting four nodal points. Remember when the constraint beam was considered like a cantilever, when you consider the third mode, two nodes are available in the beam except the support but here when we are considering the four elastic modes fourth elastic mode we are getting the four intermediate nodes so then we are getting here in the fifth elastic mode we are getting five nodes five nodes are getting so at the nodal point displacement are zero nodal points here you can see the nodal points here you can see that 0.06L, 0.226L, 0.409L, 0.591L, 0.774L, 0.94L and these are the free uh, uh, conditions so there will be no supports. No support uh, therefore displacement are possible there and you can see this is the first mode in the first mode itself you are getting two nodes in the second mode elastic mode you are getting three nodes like that you can note the different nodal points okay so this is rigid body mode of free free beam and this is elastic mode of free free beam similarly if i go to fixed fish beam the basic function is this phi x is equal to a1 cos hyperbolic lambda x plus a2 sin hyperbolic lambda x plus a3 cos lambda x plus a4 sin lambda x. At the fixed end what happens? Fixed end both the ends being clamped. Y end is first derivative are 0. Similarly here y is 0 first derivative del y by del x equal to 0. So that means phi is 0 and phi prime that is d phi by dx is equal to 0. So we are utilizing the condition phi 0 equal to 0 we are getting a1 equal to minus a3. Again phi prime at 0 equal to 0 we are getting a2 is equal to minus a4. 
So, utilizing this condition, we are now getting phi x is equal to a1 cos hyperbolic lambda x minus cos lambda x plus a2 sin hyperbolic lambda x minus sin lambda x and phi prime equal to a1 lambda sin hyperbolic lambda x plus sin lambda x plus a2 lambda cos hyperbolic lambda x minus cos lambda x okay again same procedure is followed so at boundary x is equal to l we write the equations and we write the determinant of the matrix formed by the coefficient of a1 and a2 and determinant is equated to 0 that means this term is here this term is here coefficient of a1 in the first equation is written in the first row coefficient of this a1 a2 in the second equations are written in the second row and then equated to 0 after expanding we are getting this so again you can see here that sin square lambda l and this these two can be combined and these two can be combined so you are getting similar equation cos hyperbolic lambda l cos lambda l similar to the free free beam okay so mode shape function is this and uh, where the lambda is alpha the constant is obtained as cos hyperbolic lambda l minus cos lambda l divided by sin h sin hyperbolic lambda l minus sin lambda l where the negative sign is associated here okay so the mode shape function if i draw i will get like that you can see at fixed end the displacement and slope both are zero so this is first mode this is second mode so this is looking like a simply supported mode shape but you can see the difference here here if you draw a tangent here it will be horizontal whereas in the simply supported case the slope was not zero at the end so here you are getting this second mode one nodal point at the center at the second mode this is first mode first mode this is second mode you are getting two nodal point and this is third mode you are getting this three nodal point and this is fourth mode you are getting this is first mode this is second this is third this is fourth and this is fifth so nodal point you can observe in the different nodes and importance of nodal point I have told you that there will be no displacement at this point when the beam is vibrated at a particular frequency ok now let us derive the orthogonality condition of the beam mode shape function now for the ith mode let us write like that e i del d to the power 4 phi i equal to dx to the power 4 minus m omega square phi i that is written by assuming that y x t is now phi i x into sin omega i t ok so here omega i also you can assign so this is uh, written after substituting here and then multiply both sides of the equation by another mode phi j x and then integrate the equation both sides of the equation with respect to x between limit 0 to l so what i get i integrate this and then this is the left hand side and right hand side was m omega i square phi i x phi j x dx carrying out the integration of the left hand side because there is no necessity of carrying out any integration here but here since the derivative are involved so after integration process it will be reduced gradually so carrying out the integration of the left hand side by parts so first we take this uh, this function one is phi j and another is d to the power 4 phi i dx to the power 4 so if i take this as the first function and this is the second function so first function into integration of the second function 
so this is written here so one order of differentiation is reduced so that is from fourth order it is now third order and the boundary limits are substituted here minus the derivative of the first function so d phi i by dx into d cube phi j by dx cube into dx okay so again you see this is already obtained as a boundary values but here again we need to carry out integration because two functions are involved here and again we can use the the product the integration by parts rule so taking this as the first function d cube phi i by dx cube so first function i have written as it is and integration of the second function is phi j x and boundary values are substituted then i have written here and then integration integration remains so minus sign was there so minus minus plus so plus is there integration 0 to l e i d square phi j by dx square into d square phi i by dx square so when i integrate this cubic function then it becomes a quadratic function and then this function is already there here we differentiated this so d square phi j by dx square is there so again we need to carry out this integration so after integrating this or in view of boundary condition the product of the n values or shape function and its derivative vanishes because we know from the boundary condition this is shear is 0 and displacement is 0 so this can be either this is 0 or this is 0 so this is term can be taken 0 as a boundary values and this is also taken 0 so that means ultimately we are having left with this e i d square phi j by dx square into d square phi i by dx square into dx equal to 0 to l m omega i square phi i x phi j x dx for another mode j we get similarly e i into d square phi i by dx square into d square phi j by dx square into dx equal to m omega this was i now in the jth mode we are getting omega j so omega j phi j x into phi i x into dx so this integration if two equations are compared then you can subtract one from another so omega i square minus omega j square because this m phi i x phi j x are common in both the equations so i have subtracted this and uh, left hand side is similar so after subtracting you are getting zero now for two distinct modes say one and two or three and four whatever may be where this the i and j are two different modes so different natural frequencies are obvious so omega i equal to not omega j so in that case we are getting this m phi i x phi j x equal to 0 for omega i equal to not omega j that means for i is equal to j we will be getting integration of 0 to l m phi i square dx equal to constant so this is what is orthogonality condition so introducing Konecker delta we can write m phi i x phi j x dx equal to Konecker delta i j provided the normalized mode shapes are used with respect to m so that the result of this integration is 1 when i is equal to j when any other normalization scheme is used this right hand side of this integral may not be 1 okay but if any other except uh, mass normalization other normalization scheme is used then of course this the result is not 1 here but when the mass normalization scheme is used then it is 1 and then the constant that is associated with the mode shape function is coming as ai equal to 1 divided by m if m is taken uniform mass 
along the length of the beam m integration 0 to l phi i square dx ok. So, non-dimensional natural frequency parameter that is very important parameter for uh, finding the values of natural frequency in any practical design. So, for different condition of the support I have given this and you can see for this cantilever we have obtained graphically and for simply supported beam it is easily obtained it is actually nothing but pi this is 2 pi this is 3 pi this is 4 pi this is 5 pi and for other condition free free condition that is obtained after solving the transcendental equation and you can see the similarity here because the transcendental equation also was of the similar nature in some cases especially for free free beam and clamp clamp beam you are getting the elastic modes of the clamp clamp beam and free free beams have the same natural frequencies. So, you are getting this value 4.73, 4.73 here and other modes you are also getting values. So, you can see as the number of mode increases the natural frequency magnitude also increases. Natural frequency is a very important parameter for structural design because uh, the natural frequency indicates that or the evaluation of natural frequency important to avoid the regional condition because if we know what will be the exciting frequency of the structure say a structure is built up in a earthquake prone area and if we have the record of earthquake then predominant ground frequency we can know and we can design the structure in such a way the natural frequency of the structure is far away from the the ground acceleration frequency of the past earthquake. So, an example is given a beam of length 0.6 meter and cross section 40 mm into 4 mm and the material properties are E is equal to 2 into 10 to the power 5 Newton per mm square and density of the material is 7850 kg per meter cube two conditions is taken for support one is simply support and other is clamp at one end and free at other end that is cantilever. So, we obtain this quantity mass per unit length this is the cross sectional area and this is the row density. So, A into rho will give you the mass mass per unit length and this is the moment of inertia. So, I is equal to 1 by 12 BD cube b is the breadth of the beam so that is 40 mm and d is the depth so this is or thickness 4 mm so this is the i then ei is uh, the ei is obtained as this quantity and in meter newton meter we have obtained the 426.66 into 10 to the power minus 1 newton meter square so, we calculate the constant quantities that is Ei by ml to the power 4 under root and this is coming as after substituting this numerical value it is coming as 16.19. So, in the simply supported condition the first natural frequency is this is the root of the frequency lambda 1. So, 3.1415 square that is pi multiplied by this constant. So, it is coming as 159.78 radian per second and it is in hertz it is 25.43 hertz. Similarly, second frequency is coming as 639.16 radian per second and in hertz it is 101.72 hertz. Third natural frequency is 1438 radian per second and in hertz it is 228.8 8 hertz. In cantilever beam, so lambda first root is 1.875 square, 875, so it is squared lambda squared and 16.19 that is the constant. So, we get this value 56.91 8 radian per second and its magnitude in hertz is 9.058 hertz. Similarly, second natural frequency is obtained as this is the lambda 2. So, lambda 2 square into this 61.58 radian per second and in hertz it is 57.55. Third natural frequency is 
998 radian per second and it's uh, in hertz it is 159 hertz so here the second route is utilized in the here third route that in the table we have seen the third route of cantilever is 7.8548 so here to find the third natural frequency the third route has been utilized okay so let us summarize today's lecture in this lecture natural frequencies and mode shapes of beam undergoing transverse vibration was discussed four boundary conditions pin pin clamp free 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 clamp clamped are illustrated the basic procedure for finding the frequency roots are to solve a transcendental equation by any numerical scheme or approximately by graphical method that i have discussed orthogonality of mode shapes are derived frequency parameters are given in tabular form for these four conditions and one numerical example was solved thank you very much mm -hmm.